Hello guys and welcome to today's Los Blancos podcast. Today is just me for today's El Derby Madrileño preview. And um, yeah, we're playing Atleti. It's obviously an exciting time for Real Madrid fans. We are currently 100% in all competitions and we play Atleti as they are, you know, they are in a... They're, they're playing good, they're playing good, but... The performances haven't quite the performances haven't quite matched the results. The results haven't been following Atleti recently, and um, you know there's been it's been gaining a lot of a lot of media attention how Atleti have been playing a lot better than they than they have been previously. They've they've changed their play style. They've gone more attacking. Diego Simeone has adapted his play style, and you know that's all interesting. So we'll get into some of that in a while. So um, yeah, today eight. Uh, in the UK for me, um, in uh, local time for Spain, it is nine o'clock uh, in the Civitas Metropolitano, newly renamed um, due to Atleti's sponsor Wanda. Not, I don't think, I think that deal expired. So, um, yeah, they've got obviously uh, Atleti are a, are a dangerous team. Let's talk about some of the dangers of that team. You know, they've really recently adapted their team. And, you know, they've got gone for a more attacking approach. They've got some more attacking players in that team. They've got some players who are quite dangerous, you know. They're dangerous players that we need to be wary of, you know. We need to be wary of some of these players. And this is not like, you know, previous Atleti sides where they would sit back, soak up the pressure, hit us on the counter. This is a different Atleti side, something that we haven't really experienced before. You know, Atleti were at the beginning of this transformation when we last played them at the Bernabeu in that 1-1 draw, you know, against um, against Atleti, it was Alvaro Rodriguez scoring the equaliser. Atleti sat back in that game, but they've completely transformed since then. Now, the last game was a 1-1 draw against Lazio, uh, where, if you recall, the goalkeeper Provedel scored a late equaliser for Lazio in game, which, you know, Atleti probably did deserve to win. They were the much better team for the large part of that game and they were unlucky um, to to uh, to only get a point from that. And then the previous game before that, they were totally dominated and outclassed by Valencia as Valencia won 3-0 in that game, which was a quite a surprising result. Kind of came out of the way for Atleti, but, you know, for Valencia, they've been on a good run. So, you know they've been on a bad bad stretch of 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 results, but the performances have been good, and yeah, it's mostly come due to that playstyle. You know, people were thinking Diego Simeone would never adapt that playstyle. That playstyle remained rigid, play the four four two. But you know, he's adapted. He's 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 become a different manager, different style, and you know, so far hasn't been you know hasn't led them to the top of the league as their performances would suggest but they've just been adapting and I think that's that's what all they need for now we do got to talk about Mr Antoine Griezmann because as as you know most things have been you know in the last few years most good things for Atleti have come due to Antoine Griezmann you know he's been the the main spark in their team the me- the metronome he is the center of that team he is the guy in that team it is his team He's the guy that, you know, links up the play, links up the defence to the attack. But also, he's often the guy who also finishes the attack for them. He's often the guy who scores a lot of goals for Atletico Madrid and, you know, brings a lot of assists to Atletico Madrid. So you can see this guy who's, you know, often he's he's, he's dropping deep to get a pick up the ball. He's advancing it himself. He's playing it forward to his teammates, getting a lot of, creating a lot of chances and then he's getting a lot of shots off as well. He's getting a lot of shots off and he's scoring a lot of goals. This is Antoine Griezmann at his best, but not. this is a different Antoine Griezmann to what you know some Madrid fans will be used to. This is not the uh, Antoine Griezmann who was one of the best uh, strikers slash centre forwards in, in the world You know, a couple years ago, uh, maybe four or five years ago. This is a much, much different Antoine Griezmann, someone who's more involved in the midfield, more involved in the midfield and getting involved in that midfield adapted completely into the centre of midfield, just, you know, dropping deep, getting the ball. This is what Antoine Griezmann is about. We saw that with France and it just looks like Atleti have just picked up a bargain. They sold him to Barcelona for that huge fee and then they've brought him back for peanuts, basically. And suddenly they've got basically another world-class player once again, you know, since he's come back, since he's since that loan situation resolved was resolved where he wasn't allowed to play more than what, half the game. 
Um, yeah, he he's been he's been fantastic, and he's he's looked like probably the best player in La Liga. I would say he's been he's been absolutely terrific um, since he's come back uh, to this uh, to this Atletico fold. And you know he's just a player we have to look out for. You know we have to track him at all times. Be careful because. You know, he's he's often picking up different positions, you know, sometimes in the defensive midfield position to pick up the ball. He's drifting out wide in the set striker, centre forward position, in the in the in the hole, in the in the spaces. He's everywhere. And, you know, it's gonna be a tough, tough job looking after Antoine Gris and make sure making sure that, you know, he isn't he isn't run, running us ragged in this game. We need to make sure that we have the midfield runners, midfield runners to track him the whole game, make sure that we don't lose control of this game because you know that is something that Antoine Griezmann would love to 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 do in this game. So you know Antoine Griezmann is a huge huge factor in how Atleti will play, and how Atleti is going to um to to try and attack us in this match. He's gonna he's gonna be a huge 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 factor um, that we have to play against. Now they lost one of my favorite Atletico players, not favorite, well probably one of the best Atletico players. They lost Yannick Carrasco in the in the in the summer to Saudi Arabia. I can't remember which club he went to, actually. Um, I think it may have been Al Ali, but I'm not sure it was. I'm not 100% sure. Don't quote me on that one. But he, they did lose Yannick Carrasco. So that's one of their big outlets gone. But they did bring in young Valencia winger, Samuel Lino, um, for a, I think it was a loan deal. He, they brought him in and he he's a really, really direct guy. He's not someone that, you know, you would associate with Atletico Madrid, but he's just a direct wing, a proper threat uh, that we have to face, you know. Our right-back situation right now, Carvajal is obviously missing for this game. He's injured. He's not going to be available. We're going to have to be wary. You know, no Carvajal for this game is going to be huge because he was on a bit of a remontada stretch. He was on a bit of a remontada stretch, and that was... You know, really assuring to see Danny Carvajal playing so well once again for us. But Danny Carvajal is missing for this match, so we're gonna to have to pick from either Lucas Vasquez or Nacho Fernandez. So it's gonna be a huge, huge problem there to have him a right back, no right back there, um, against someone like Samuelino, who is who is a solid, solid winger, someone who will take on our players and just cause a huge, huge threat. Huge threat. So yeah, that is that's another problem that we're gonna have to face in this game, and that could be decisive. It could be very very decisive in this game. But I think the main threat that Atleti is gonna pose is from the wing back position. These two have been huge huge problems in La Liga. Um, one especially has been a, a big 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 player in La Liga. Not for, not for for big sides, but for lesser sides, he's been a really good player, really solid player. And that's Javi Galan, uh, left back, left wing back for Atleti. Really good cross of the ball, really good progressor of the ball, gets forward really nicely. And, you know, he's, he's a really solid contributor. He's been playing for Celta, Vigo and Huesca in recent years in La Liga. And he's been consistently those two teams' best player. You know, as you can argue, Iago Aspas for Celta, but... Uh, he's been a really, really good player, and now he's found his way into into Atleti, um, playing against you know this is probably his best, best, best um, career achievement. At age twenty nine, he's he's not getting any younger, but he is a really, really good fullback, really good at crossing the ball, finding his target. And on the other side, you've got a really nice fullback as well. Nahuel Molina is a really, really quick, really direct, and you know sometimes he does look a bit raw, but. You know, in games like this where, you know, Real Madrid are going to look to be more calm, more, 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 try and make the game less chaotic. It's going to be huge for Atleti to have someone like now Nahuel Molina, who's just quick, causing problems all the time, getting, trying to get in behind. And, you know, with, with qualities such as Coque, with, um, with Mr. Antoine Griezmann finding, uh, finding good passes in behind, this is going to be a huge problem for us. We're going to have to find the solution for Nahuel Molina making those runs in behind, which not many players w- would, would, you know, you wouldn't look at Nahuel Molina and say he's my, one of Atleti's main tre- threats, but he is. He is a huge, huge problem that we're going to have to face in this game. And then, you know, we're gonna have, we know the familiar front for Atleti, which is Alvaro Morata. 
Morata has been been good this season. He's been good, and this is what you kind of can expect from Mar- Morata. Morata's never been, you know, this thirty goal a season striker, but you can expect. Well, I think uh, fifteen goals a season for uh, from Morata. It's no problem, and you know we've had we've been having a lot of problems with with ex Madrid players scoring against us. You know they've got three of them. They got him, uh, Marcos Llorente, uh, Mario Hermoso. They've got these guys who are. Ex Madrid players. Let's hope they don't score against against us this time. But it's a it's a huge huge problem that we're gonna have to face uh, in this game. So those are those are a couple of problems that we're gonna have to face in this game. That you know they're problems. They are huge huge problems for us. And yeah, it's it's definitely not something that we 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 can take lightly. You know, people make the joke out of Alvaro Morata, but he, at the end of the day, he still scores goals. He scores goals. Yeah, he provides assists. He's a good team player, and you know it's it's no wonder so many big teams have bought Alvaro Morata. He's a he's a good player that a lot of teams would like to have. A lot of managers would like to have, and yeah, he he can definitely cause us some problems. Um, in the midfield, they also have young Pablo Barrios, who's been playing a lot of games for them, scored in their last game off of a pretty big deflection, um, of from the Lazio defender. But uh, last year it was Kamada who took the big deflection from Pablo Barrios. But Barrios has been a really, really nice young player for them, and um, just brought a, and that that beauty of youth to that team. You know, which you know has been struggling a little bit with the age profile. He's just he's really, really quick. He's he's really, really he's just everywhere, and that's that's what something that Atleti. I think Diego Simeone doesn't want to lose that initial identity that got him so far with Atleti. He doesn't want to lose the identity of being a, a tough tackling, tough, tough to break down team. You know, I think Pablo Barrios brings that with that, you know, with that Colchoneros um, identity with him. You know, he brings that 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 sense of Atletico Madrid. You know, which you know sometimes will be lost in bringing players like like Samuel Lino in, in into the team. You know, you do, you don't want to lose that identity, but by adapting the style. So, I think you know Pablo Barrios is is definitely an Atletico Madrid player through and through. So you know we know what to expect from him, from Coque, from from Marco Llorente in that midfield three. That's gonna be a huge huge issue for us to face um, in that midfield three, but. Let's talk about Real Madrid now because we have obviously got a hundred percent record heading into this game. Yesterday, um, you know, we've always got always got to look at what Barcelona is doing um, because you know whatever Real Madrid do is in response to Barcelona or you know proactively looking at Barcelona. We have to look at Real Madrid and Barcelona side to side. And yesterday, Barcelona came down, you know, came came out, came back from two 0 down against Celta Vigo. 3-2 in the last 10 minutes or something like that. And it just, it's really annoying that they came back from that game. You know, um, it was Raul Cancelo coming back and, you know, helping that, that cause for them. They were, they, they came back and they played, they won 3-2. So, you know, at Barcelona now, I believe, are top of Barca, of La Liga. So it's now up to us to respond and find an appropriate response. We, we're obviously not going to score as many goals as Barcelona, but... We need to find a response, and um, it's it's a hard game to play against Atletico Madrid, and we've got a huge, huge run of games coming up next. We've got Las Palmas next, and then after that, we've got a few. We've got a game against Girona, and you know, if you know Real Madrid, we don't we struggle against Girona. We struggle each and every game against Girona because they cause huge, huge problems for us. And then after that, we've got Napoli. So. You know, the next run of games is, is a really, really tough game. A really, really tough game for us. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready fit well, fitness-wise and, you know, playing-wise. We need to win every single one of these games, win as many as we can, try and match Barcelona's results and, you know, take the lead at the top of the table because at the end of the day, that's what we need to do. We need to fight on all fronts. So, in goal, I've gone for Kepa. I think Kepa's practically fine for this game he was all right midweek didn't have to do too much against Union Berlin uh Union Berlin didn't pr- provide too much of a threat on offense but you know I think Kepa's going to be fine for this game against Atletico Madrid he's going to have to face a lot more shots than he did against Union Berlin because Atleti provide a lot more high quality chances but um I think Kepa can be up to the chance up to the up to the core challenge here so yeah uh, Kepa here we go in the in the goalkeeper position Right back. Now, this is a huge, huge issue of contest. I think 
we're going to have to consider what Atleti are going to do in this position and also what happened midweek. Midweek, we played Lucas Vasquez and I thought Lucas Vasquez was good. He played well going forward. Maybe, you know, his touches were a bit off. He was he was a bit he was a bit heavy every, every time the ball went to him. But I think overall, going forward, he probably did some really good stuff, you know, helped us, helped the whip. And I think at the end of the day, well, he didn't look too bad. So I think that I was happy with Lu Lucas Vasquez. But in this game, I think we're going to play against a winger who's going to be more direct, more more challenging uh, to play against instead of a wing back like uh, like Mr. Robin Gosens since we played midweek. So I think um, I would go for Nacho Fernandez at right back. I think Nacho is perfect for this game. I think considering you know he did start midweek, I I know that, but I think. He didn't. He didn't have to do too much physically, athletically. He didn't have to to do too much. And I think in this game, I think Nacho Fernandez is perfect because I think we're gonna have to come up against the direct winger. And I think you know we need a defender against that winger, not not Lucas Vasquez, who is a winger. So um, yeah, I would go for Nacho Fernandez if we need a goal. Obviously, there's the there's the substitution that we can make. Bring on Lucas Vasquez and uh, try and try and get a goal, but. Yeah, I'm happy with Nacho Fernandez then. Um, in the centre backs, I think no deliberation. We've got no options, so we've got to go for the, these two, Alaba and Rudiger. They've been starting to form a good partnership. They know each, what each other are going to do. We haven't conceded too many goals, which is hap I'm happy with that. You know, apart from the obvious blip that we face at the start of games, where we just go to sleep, and then we find find a way to to come back in the second half. Um, so yeah, I think these two completely fine. They just need to make sure that we switch on because coming coming back against Atletico Madrid, especially against this Atletico Madrid side, it's not going to be so easy because they're going to be attacking us as well. So yeah, it's going to be a difficult game, and I think these two need to be switched on right from the beginning. Uh, left back Fran Garcia comes back into the side for me. I think Fran Garcia is going to be huge in this game going forward. He's going to be bombing forward, trying to get the assist that we need. And I think that's going to be huge. Creating chances is going to be huge in this game. He's going to be coming up against Nahuel Molina, who's going to be a lot of the times not present in that in that right wing back slot. And I think uh, he's going to be quicker than Nahuel Molina in, in a lot of the situations, which you know is going to be huge because Nahuel Molina is a huge attacking threat. Um, so Fran Garcia's pace and delivery is going to be huge in this game. You know, bringing him on, trying to get the assist for Jose Lu. Um, yeah, I think that's gonna be huge for the for this game. Uh, then the midfield four. Uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to keep a lot of the possession in this game. I think for me, I, I'm gonna go for a midfield four. Sure, many starts, no problem. Sure, Jude Bellingham starts, no problem. Um, but the other two are obviously where the where the deliberation lies. Personally, I think the right back needs the support. I'm gonna go for Fede Valverde on the right back position. And then I'm gonna to put Tony Cruz on the right and the left with let the, I didn't say I said Fede Valverde at the right back position. I'm gonna go for Fede Valverde at the right centre mid uh, position and then um Tony Cruz in the in the left centre mid position. I think Cruz is gonna be perfect for this game, picking out the passes, trying to trying to just help this team. But um, you know, that's also gonna be a huge problem with Tony Cruz uh, tracking the the runner from the from the left wing because a lot of the time, that's going to be a huge, huge problem for us. So, is that's also the deliberation for having Camavinga in this game. You have Camavinga when Fran Garcia is playing because a lot of the time they can just switch. Camavinga occupies the left back position when we're defending, and you know we he he faces the 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 tough winger. But obviously, there's no tough winger in this game that we have to play like we did last week against Kubo. So I think Fran Garcia won't get cooked as often as he did last week. So I think Fran Garcia's attacking output is going to be completely fine. And, you know, his defensive output is going to be completely fine as well. So, yeah, I'm happy with having Fran Garcia only in this game. Um, and, you know, having Tony Kroos cover him is fine. I think Tony Kroos is going to be a lot more valuable for us to have from the beginning. And, you know, we can then bring on Kamavinga to shore up things late on in the game. Then we can then bring on Modric if we want to want attacking substitute. So that's important for us to have. Uh, let's talk about Mr. Jude Bellingham because Jude Bellingham scored once again in the mid midweek against um, Union Berlin. Um, I've, I've never seen a guy getting criticised for scoring goals, but here we are with Jude Bellingham. He put in a good performance um, overall. Yeah, I think he could have done better, but I think overall he was 
he was the match winner. He decided the game, but he he also played a lot of good passes. Um, he dropped deep when we needed him to. He he helped us defensively, pressed a lot. I think at the end of the day, that's that's all we can ask from him right now. I don't want him to do anything more than just score goals at this current moment in time. I would love for him to in the future be more def- decisive in how we play. Um, right now, I know we know he's not he's not the the decisive player, but right now all I care about is him scoring goals because if he's the decision maker, if he's the guy to to change the game, then I ain't complaining, bro. I ain't complaining because I'd rather have him deciding games, winning games for us, rather than him sitting back in the midfield playing sideways passes. That's for other players to do. That's for players, you know, like Tony Cruz, for Kamavinga to do in a slightly deeper role. He's going to be the one deciding games, and I'm happy for him to do that. So I'm really happy with Jude before Jude's performances. And you know, if he could get another goal here, it would be quite nice. And I think the Madrid fans would be would quite enjoy that as well. So um, yeah, uh, another goal here would be lovely against Atletico. His first derby goal would be absolutely brilliant for for Jude Bellingham. Um, then the front two. Now, we've got to discuss a few things here because um, Vinny's back. Vinny is back for this game. And that is a huge, huge return from injury. Um, we've missed, we've definitely missed Vinny. We've missed Vinny because, you know, at the end of the day, Rodrigo is Rodrigo. Rodrigo is Rodrigo. Rodrigo is not Vinny. Rodrigo is not Vinny, Vinicius Jr., um, you know, he's gone through the the stretch, you know, that he normally does through the season where Rodrigo is just, he just can't find the back of the net. Whatever he does, he just can't find the back of the net. And, you know, it just feels like that he's come at the wrong time. But guess what? Vinicius is back. Vinicius is back. And I think, you know, it's important not to rush him. It's important not to rush him, which is why I've gone for Jose Lu and Rodrigo up top as the front true still. Now, I think Vinny coming off the bench would be absolutely killer. It would be killer in this game. I think nil-nil, Vinny comes off in the bench in the 60th minute. We're going to kill that defence. He would kill that defence. But it's all important not to not to put too much strain on a, on a muscle, muscle injury. He obviously went out with a hamstring injury. Just don't put too much emphasis on Vinny's return. You know, if, he, if he's not ready, if he's not 100%, don't strain him right from the start. Just... Play him, you know, play him slowly. Don't rush him back into things because we need him for the whole season. You know, we saw how dry our attacking options look in the in the squad list. Yeah, it, it just looks horrible, horrible in the squad list when we've got three attackers. You know, it's it, we just need Vinny to just continue with it, with how he's going, you know, continue with this recovery process. If it can help us win this game, you know, come on later on in the game, that would be brilliant because Vinny as an as a impact substitute would be absolutely ridiculous. We saw him, well, in the in, a, in two years ago in Ancelotti's first few games um, in a second stint at the club. He was deciding games off the bench when we were starting Hazard and Bale. He was deciding games off the bench. This is what I want Vinny to do in this game. Just decide the games off the bench. If you can just provide just something that's just going to be absolutely the, the athletic defenders can't cope. Just make sure the athletic defenders can't cope. So that's what I want from Vinicius Junior off the bench in this game. Um, Joselu, people were criticizing Joselu's performance midweek. He missed a lot of chances. It happens. It happens. And you know, so far this season, you know, if it happens more than once, if it happens more than three times, I would say, yeah, fair enough. Criticize Joselu because he's not. He's not been good enough, but so far this season, he's got us the goals that we've required him to score. He's got us a lot of results. One bad game, fair enough. You know, he just he had so many chances. It's just unfortunate what happened to him against Union Berlin. He deserved to score a goal, and I think he he was doing all the right things. You know, he had plenty of headers, plenty of chances off the off the ground. It's just not. It just didn't go off of him. But he's dragging a lot of defenders into his way. You know he's he's put you know that that Union Berlin defense was tall. They were tall guys, and Hosselu was still finding finding the opportunity to score. He's clearly doing everything right, Hosselu. He's clearly drawing a lot of attention. It's just it's so beneficial having Hosselu in the attack that I think continue playing him against Atleti against the, uh, Stefan Savic, who's obviously a huge, huge, good, a really good defender. Having just drawing attention, creating chances for himself. That's what you want Jose Lu to do. 
Um, let's talk about Brahim Diaz. Because every time Brahim Diaz comes on, he is really nice. He's really nice and he's causing problems. He's just causing problems for the opposition defence. I, I personally think he should be playing more. He should be playing more because I understand the fact that he, you know, you want to have a substitute threat. That's that's completely fine. Um, and I think that's that's perfectly good. But I don't think 10 minutes at the end of the game is when Brahim Diaz should be playing. I think you have to be giving him. I think he should be one of the first substitutes off the bench, personally. I think he should be the guy coming off at the 60th minute mark. I think he should be the guy coming on at that moment in time. I think he should be the guy taking on the defender, the defenders when they're when they're tired. And I think Brahim Diaz could be absolutely pivotal for us. He could be a he could be a game decider type type player for us. He's really really good. He's been really showing a lot of promise so far this season. If Jude wasn't there in, in the last game against Union Berlin, it would have been Brahim Diaz who would have scored that goal. And yeah, I'm I'm really happy with Brahim Diaz coming off the bench, but I want him more minutes. I want more minutes for him because he's deserved those minutes. And yeah, I think that's that's what Ancelotti should do. So, you know, we've got the subs in this game. We've got the subs ready. You know, Vinny, uh, for me, I think Vinny comes on in the 70th minute. Brahim Diaz comes on the 60th. You've got Luka Modric coming on. You've got Kamavinga coming on. Lucas Vasquez coming on. You've got a lot of options here. You know, apart from that, you've got Sobias as well coming on if you need him to. You've got, uh, mine's gone blank. My mind has gone completely blank. But that is, you know, that's a good squad. You've got five substitutes there ready. Um, bring those players on. Don't be shy to use them. Um, Ancelotti previously has only made subs at the 70th minute mark. Don't, don't waste, don't waste the subs. Use them at the right time. Be, be, be ready to use them. Um... What else we got to discuss? Um, I think, yeah, it's a, it's a huge game. We got obviously we got Las Palmas on in the midweek, and you know that's gonna be another huge huge game for us. Um, but I think the last thing I want to discuss is Mister Arda Guler, who's gonna be returning um, midweek. Hopefully, hopefully, and don't rush Arda Guler. But um, that will be huge to see. <laughs> We've obviously seen the the training clips once again. And it's obviously good to get excited over a player, over training clips. But let's see if he can do this in the game. And I believe he can. I believe it's going to be a huge game changer having Aldo Goler in the, in, the, in the team. Having him, you know, play games. I think it's going to be huge. I think he's going to be a huge, huge, huge factor. Um, when we play Las Palmas, we will also see um, Marvin Park for us to play against. If you remember a couple of seasons ago, he played for us. Um, in that injury stricken season, he played for us quite a lot, and I thought he was quite good. So, um, yeah, it'll be nice to see Marvin Parks. Let's see how much he's developed. You know, he'd probably score a goal against us. That would be a nice, nice thing to see. Um, once again, so another good one. And then Hirona next week. Hirona just come off a good result to yesterday with a five three game against Mallorca. They've been absolutely entertainment. They've been pure entertainment the whole season long. You know, they're going to cause us problems. But Mr. Tati Castellanos is gone um, to Lazio. So thank God for that. He ain't going to be coming back to score four goals. I, w- I wanted to get revenge on him. But, you know, fine. If, that, if that's how it's going to be, just get revenge on uh, on Hirona. But they've been absolutely entertaining. One of the one of the best teams in La Liga to watch. Um, them, Real Sociedad. Oh, two fantastic teams to watch in La Liga. So, yeah, I think that is it for today. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think we've got anything else to discuss. Hopefully, another win um, at the Civitas Metropolitano for us. You know, last year's result uh, at the Civitas Metropolitano was off the back of those, the 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 banner, the Coke interview it was all of that. It came off all of that, and we won two 0 with goals from Rodrigo and Valverde. Hopefully something similar once again, maybe an even bigger result would be absolutely fantastic. You know, I would love to shut those Atleti fans up. I would love to 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 um to go back on top of the table uh, head, heading into that game against Las Palmas. So, yeah, I'm happy with everything coming into it. So that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe. And one last thing, if you haven't, go check out Real Madrid Committee in the description below and that is obviously Sean's Instagram page and um, best place to check out for 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 news 
And for Real Madrid news overall, you just want to hear Real Madrid news, you want to hear Real Madrid opinions, you want to hear, you want a place to discuss with other Real Madrid fans. You know, Real Madrid committee play is the place to go in the description below. Um, you just have to search up Real, Real Madrid committee in Instagram if you want to see it. Um, and, you know, help them get to 100k, 100k followers. You know, that's that's the goal. Help, help them get to 100k followers. Um, if you want to follow them on Twitter, it will be RMC committee. Um, at RMC committee. So, yeah, help Sean get to 100k followers on Instagram and help him grow his page on, on Twitter as well. So, yeah, you want to discuss with them um, and you want to discuss with other Real Madrid committee fans, then go ahead and follow him on Instagram. But that is it for today. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.